Hello, welcome back. This is part three of making an endless runner in Godot. In this video and the next video, we're going to talk about how to make these characters walk across the bottom of the screen. These are the characters that the penguin is eventually going to be pooping on. So I'm breaking this up into two parts because it's a little involved. In part one, which is this video, we're going to talk about how to create all these character scenes. And then we're going to cover the first part of an object pool script. In the next video, we're going to finish that script. And this script is going to be responsible for instancing all these scenes and then having the instance nodes actually scroll across the screen, as you can see here. Um, so the script is going to be very generic and reusable, which will be very useful because we want similar functionality for obstacles and power ups later on in the game. Um, so yeah, at the end of the second video, our game should look like this. And by the end of this video, we'll get about halfway there. So the first thing we want to do is drag in all of our character assets. You should be able to find these online in the GitHub repository. I'll also leave a link below in the description. And so we can just drag them into our sprites subfolder. And now we have all these nice character PNGs for each of the characters that we'll be using in our game. After we've dragged in these resources, we're just going to create a new subfolder in the scene subfolder called characters. And this is where we'll be placing all of our character scenes. Each character will have its own scene. Uh, I'm going to start with Captain Hook. I'm just going to go alphabetically. And each character is going to have a static body 2D as its root node. And this is because we are going to want to have some collisions, um, but we don't really need any kind of fancy movement that the other kinematic or the other physics body 2Ds provide. So I'll just kind of go along and add all these scenes in for each player. Um, I'll fill out the node trees later on. I just want to kind of have all the scenes created first. And yeah, this is fairly repetitive right now. I just need to do this for every scene. And so on and so forth. Now that we've created all of our scenes, let's go ahead and fill them out. I'm going to start with Captain Hook, just because it's first alphabetically. We're going to add a sprite node as a child, which will hold our texture, and also an animation player, which will animate our sprite. Um, we now need to drag in the PNG, the resource for Captain Hook. Um, it looks like this is fine, but remember to kind of uncheck filter if it's pixelated. You can see that if it's on, then it will be pixelated. So you want filter to be off. And we'll go ahead and turn each frames to three, just like we did with our penguin. And similarly to our penguin, we will animate this guy by animating the frame property. Um, so with our penguin, we use this little key button here to add frames to our animation. But this time we're just going to do it manually. So you can right click and click insert key. And then if you click on them, you can just manually edit the frame properties in the right. Kind of messed up here. Let me try again. Okay, so time is 0.5 and value is 1. So at time 0.5, the frame will change to the first frame. And at time zero, the frame is the zeroth frame. And so we get our little walking animation like that. In order not to bore you, I've gone ahead and done what we did for the Captain Hook scene to all the other scenes. And so if we kind of peruse through here, we can see that each of these other scenes has a sprite and an animation player. And all the animation players have the animation named walk. And it's actually important that all the animations are named the same thing because eventually we're going to attach the same script to all of these scenes. And so it's important that the animations and the nodes are all named the same thing so that the script can be generic. 
And one thing to look at here or check is just whether or not these textures are pixel perfect, whether or not they're blurry. And so we can see that this one is actually a little blurry. And the way to fix that is just by going to our sprite, right clicking on the texture and then clicking edit. And then if we go on over to the import section, we can uncheck filter and click re-import. And then that makes it crystal clear. Um, so we can kind of go ahead and check some of the other ones as well. And it looks like some of them are blurry um, as well. Oops, I forgot to do this. Um, so yeah, just make sure that you do this for all of the textures that you use in your game if you're using pixel art so that nothing is blurry. So we can finally get started on our object pool now. And to get started, we're going to create a new script called objectpool.gd. And as a reminder, the object pool is going to be responsible for spawning all of our characters, repositioning them, um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And it's going to be generic so that it can be reused later on to uh, also spawn obstacles and power-ups as well. So this is going to be a very kind of useful script for our game. And the general outline of how it works is that we're going to provide a path to the resources that the object pool will contain. And we'll add all those resources or sorry, we'll kind of instance all those resources. We'll add them to some pool and then we'll manage them by spawning them, by repositioning them, um, etc. And we'll see how more about how that works later on. But to start with, let's first just go over how we're actually going to load all these resources in the script. And so the general outline of the ready function, this doesn't cover everything, but um, it's kind of very high level, is first we look at our export variable gpath, which you can control in the UI. Um, if it's a directory, you're going to load um, for each path in, dire in the directory, you're going to load the resource at that path. And then you're going to make G copies of each um, copies of it. And then finally, you are going to um, put it into the object pool. And then later on, we'll do some other stuff with it. And so the first function that we want to write here is something that just takes in a path, like for example, the uh, G path that we have above. And kind of just to um, clarify, the G is for global. Uh, that's just something that I like to prefix my variables with for clarity. So this list files and directory function is going to get a, um, take in a path like G path and return the names of all the files um, in that path, sorry, in that directory. So the path should actually be a directory. For example, it can be uh, res scenes characters, and then it would return, you know, all the character scenes under that directory or in that directory. And just as a quick note on uh, GDScript types, you can't kind of subtype arrays. You So you can't do like, say this returns an array of strings. You can just say it returns an array. And I'll just say this returns an array to make the uh, type checker happy. And so what we want to do here is first kind of declare what we're going to return, an array of files. Then we're going to open a directory and note that the colon equals kind of automatically types the variable to the left. Then we will open the path um, that we was that we were passed in. And then the lister begin is kind of just some function that says, okay, we can start um, using the directory. And then in the while loop, we will basically just keep on getting the next uh, the next path in that directory. 
uh, and you can kind of look at the documentation for directory if you want to learn more about how this does or sorry about what this does but yeah it's basically just looping through all of the paths in a directory and then finally we need to do some cleaning up after ourselves and then we can return all of the files and so this function is very useful um, but we want to kind of make another helper function so that in the ready function our work is going to be very easy um, and one thing we want to support is actually being able to make an object pool with one object for example it would be nice if g path could just equal you know the the path to a specific scene uh, list files and directory isn't compatible if we just pass it the um, the path to a file, for example, it only really works with directories. And so we'll write this other high level, higher level function, which given a path to either a file or a directory, it returns a list of all the paths for uh, which we should instance a resource. And so this will work if you give it, you know, a path to a scene file or a path to a directory that contains a bunch of scene files. Um, and the other thing it'll do is why it's called get full paths is it'll return a full path to these uh, to these files as opposed to list files and directory which just returns the file name. So if the path is already a file then we can just return it um, and then we can use our helper function that we just wrote and then just turn all of the file names into full paths by prepending, um, prepending the past in path and then we are done. Now that we're done with those functions we can test out our code by just calling it in the ready function. So we'll use the export variable gpath and pass it in to get full paths and then we'll just print out the result. And in order to test this, let's add a node with these, um, sorry, the script attached to our main scene. And we can just add basically any old node. We'll add a node 2D. The main thing is that the script just needs to run. We'll call this character pool because we'll use it later on to spawn our characters. And then we can attach the object pool script. So right now you can see that if you just run the game, uh, you get all these kind of very high level paths because we didn't actually set G path. So it's just the empty string. If we go ahead and set it to something reasonable, like the path that contains all the character scenes, then you can see that, okay, yeah, we get um, a list of all the character scenes, which we can later instance and put into our uh, object pool. And then it also works if you just specify a specific character scene like Umbridge, it'll just return um, a list of size one. Hey guys, thanks for watching. So just as a reminder, the source code is in the description as well as a blog post that goes over the same material. In the next video, I'll finish up this object pool script. Um, I was originally going to do it in one video, but it just got a little too long. So yeah, look out for that sometime, um, hopefully next week. All right, see you then.